Hello, I'm Bob Shrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Together we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. Together. In our opinion, In our of course. Opinion. Today, Brad, we're going to talk about the Borg. Well, it depends what you want to call it. I call it the Borg Exertion Scale. Um, this here is the Borg Category Rating Scale. Um, I think the most common name for it is probably the Borg Rate of perce Perceived Exertion. And that's basically what we're trying to measure is how much uh, effort is someone putting forth in their opinion. <laughs> <laughs> we are hot today. Yeah, we're hot. Yeah, I always just, re a lot of people just refer to this as the perceived exertion. Perceived you exertion know. scale. It's become kind of the standard. Uh, yeah. People kind of know, it. I mean, in our field, in physical therapy, you often just say the Borg and people know what you're talking exactly. about. Exactly. Invented by? Gunner. Gunner, Gunner Borg. Borg. Mm -hmm. PhD, was he, you said? Yeah, and his daughter also was. From where? Stockholm, Sweden, not Stockholm, Wisconsin. Yeah, but <laughs> could have been. It could have been, been, yeah, sure. All right. And I, when I first saw the, the, the exertion scale, I wondered why they didn't just go from 1 to 10. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question, Bob. But the reason was is that if you, you have this exertion scale, it starts with a 6, ends with a 20. And the idea is, is if you multiply any one of these numbers by 10, let's say I'm at a 10, um, it, that's what that's saying is that you're at a fairly light effort and you can take that 10 and multiply it by 10 and that's a pulse of a hundred so it's it's trying to relate to your pulse so at 60 which is probably a pretty low pulse for most people I mean, resting probably, heart rate. a resting heart rate um, that would be probably no effort for most people uh, it's actually standing or laying in bed you're at a six right mm -hmm. right exactly um, and also your, your resting heart rate would be 60. Sure. If you were really pushing it, right. I don't know if you can get your heart rate up to 200. Um, I don't know if I could. I well, I think younger people could. Maybe they could. Yeah, yeah. So, but anyways, if you're, you do a 400 meter dash as hard as you can, you're probably maxing out your heart rate. Right. Maybe you have to go a little more than that, but you put yourself at a 20. You can hardly, when you're done, you can hardly stand. You're just exactly. huffing and puffing for as much air as you and can. That's, and that's what it correlates yeah. here with. I don't care yeah. so you can see it. Uh, okay. okay, allow, allow. Right, right here. Maximal effort. Yeah. So what you do when you're using the Borg um, exertion scale, the exertion scale, is you actually have this on hand and you're going to show it to your patient or you're going to you look at it yourself sure. and to determine where you're at. We quite often use these with uh, people who have undergone surgery, especially heart surgery, right. because uh, and also people who are on medication that kind of messes up their heart rate um, so because we can't really go by their heart rate as a reliable indicator. Right. Because when, you, when you're elderly or even after surgery, you might get up into a 140 just by walking. Yes. So we really want to know how much effort are you putting forth in your you know, in perceived effort. Right. So we have them look at the scale and we have them do something. Let's say we have them just start walking. And let's say they're up in 11 or 12 zone already just with walking. Generally, when we're working with people, we want them in that range of 12 to 14. That's a good moderate level of exercise. Um, in here on this chart it actually says it's an endurance rate, uh, training zone and I think that's a, a good rate. We talked about also, Brad, about uh, being able to talk while you're, while you're um, working out. I wouldn't know because you're not letting me say anything. Oh, <laughs> I guess I'm dominating the, <laughs> the board discussion. Yeah, no, like you were saying, I think uh, in cardiac rehab people know a lot more about this than us as physical therapists. Right. Um, so they're, they're more the experts, but if you can communicate to your walking briskly down the road and you can communicate back and forth without having to stop and catch your breath, you can get aerobic, you're at the low level of an aerobic uh, workout. Um, and that's oftentimes where we want people to be. We don't want them, you're not training for an event right. uh, or a race, but you're training to be healthy and, right. and that's adequate. So then at, you're at the, uh, you said 11 to 12, in I would range. say because that's the, you know that's just coming off the fairly light and it's going up to the somewhat hard. So I, I, I certainly wouldn't want to go above that. You see in the strength training zone, if you're lifting weights really hard, it's, and so in other words, it's going to be a not very long period of time. Right. I mean, you're not going to be you know uh, lifting maximal weight for for five minutes. Right. So so that's obviously why it's going to be hard or very hard. Uh, you might get pushed up into the right. range. Sure. So. 
I, I think this, uh, for myself, the first time I ever saw this uh, was at the YMCA or a fitness center. Um, they have it on the board in the, with aerobic training where you have a class and the instructor will refer to this. And actually, I never even noticed it didn't go below six before because I was just looking at the numbers and immediately I look it up in the 12 and 13 because that's what the instructor knows. So when you see this now at the uh, local fitness uh, facility, you'll have a little more background. You know what it's about. Yeah. So. so this is relates right into what we can uh, pretty much fix everything except for a broken heart. But we might get into that too.